This is the pivot where we talk about topics that are central to our game. And I'm looking forward to this one because with the Olympics around the corner, we're going to see some of the best athletes on display. But I want to know who the women's basketball GOAT is, no cap, and who better to have this conversation with than TSN Sports Center host, Toronto Raptors sideline reporter, and Canadian media icon herself, Kate Burness. And also alongside us is a new face on camera, but an active voice in the women's basketball spaces, writing for her hoop stats and hashtag basketball is Anila Khan. So with the stage set, Kate, I'm going to you first. I dare ask the question, who is your WNBA GOAT? But when it comes to greatest female basketball player of all time, in my humble opinion, it has to be Diana Taurasi. I mean, I can't even tell you how long I've been watching Diana Taurasi play basketball. She's now 39 years old, which blows my mind. I mean, she's two years older than me, and she's still playing at the level that she currently is. She's a three-time NBA champion, obviously winning all those years with the UConn Huskies. She's a four-time Olympic gold medalist, soon to be five. She's won three WNBA championships. She's a 10-time All-Star. I think what the coolest part, though, about Diana is you cannot compare really her to anyone. I'm talking about male or female when it comes to a collegiate, an international, and on a professional level. All of those three, the accolades that this woman has and continues to do in nearly 40 years of age is absolutely tremendous. My WNBA go is definitely Tamika Catching. She's third all time in points scored, third all time in rebounds, eighth all time in assists, first in steals and 12th among blocks. She's a small forward. So her ability to switch and defend, and, and let me remind you, she's a two-way player. She's won the WNBA Defensive Player of the Year Award five times. Not only that, her ability to score and then come defend you, that's legendary stuff. And for her, not only just about how she played on the court, off the court, she was the WNBA's, the Sportswoman Award for three years in a row, just to let you know that her teammates and as well as her other uh, opponents greatly valued her. And so for me, she's the WNBA GOAT. And you're right, like you're speaking about her. And the first thing I think about when I think about Tanika Catchings is the fact that she's that two-way player. Like she does absolutely everything, but maybe doesn't get the recognition because the accolades like a Diana Taurasi, a Sue Bird, a Brianna Stewart, and so on. So great pick. Great. I'm not even going to argue that one because I like that we're giving her, giving her some love. Well, we have to go and uh, talk about the next generation. So, Neil, I'm going to start with you for this one. Who do you have, do you you believe that's going to become the GOAT of the future? Brianna Stewart, hands down. Because I'll tell you. Stay away, stay away, stay away. (laughs) Because she's already accomplished so much, and she's only been in the league five seasons. She hasn't even turned 27 yet. She turns 27 in August, and she's already won two WNBA championships. She's won gold medals. She's won NCAA championships. She's won, I mean, what hasn't she won? And her ability to score, her ability to grab rebounds, her, it's so hard to defend against a player like her that, that makes her stand out. Kate, who do you got? Um, for, so we're talking future, right? Future goats. Future goats. Okay, and also to just a little more love to Stewie there for a moment. I think the coolest part of Brianna Stewart was as well. I actually think she is a better player off the Achilles tear, which like you think about a significant injury like that. And obviously, you know, we see, you know, Achilles, ACL, whatever it may be. You know, sometimes, I mean, you lose a step. You have to go through that rehabilitation and let's like, let's call the spade a spade here. And it's not like these WNBA players are getting the exact same treatment as NBA players or have the resources as NBA players. The fact that Stewie was able to do what she did last season coming off that injury to me, mind-blowingly awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go future goat here, but I'm not picking someone currently in the WNBA, so I hope I'm still within the rules here. So now I don't really know the rules of this. Ah, uh, it's okay. We'll let okay, IK you- just for you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it. It has to be Paige Beckers for me, though. And uh, the first time I ever saw Paige Beckers, like I think a lot of female basketball fans, was when she was on the cover of Slam magazine as a high school female, the first high school female to be graced on that cover. And I thought, okay, you know what? Whenever I see something like that, you know the amount of pressure that's already on you. And then you're going to go to a program like Connecticut, who has won an ungodly amount of championships under Gina Oriyama and have that type of pressure on you. 
I think Paige w- went above and beyond in her rookie season. And I think it was a 28 and one record. They made it to the final four, obviously came up a little bit short. She averaged just over 20 points a game, uh, nearly six assists and 46% from deep as well. I mean, I don't know what else you want from this young lady. Um, and then just in case you didn't, you know, think enough of Paige Beckers, who is going to be a star in the future, uh, she goes to the ESPYs and in my opinion, has one of the greatest speeches from a young athlete I've ever heard in my life, advocating for black female athletes. And it just showed me that on, on the court, off the court, uh, this kid has absolutely everything. So for me, future GOAT, I mean, she's lived up to all the hype, all the pressure so far. I don't, couldn't understand why she wouldn't be able to do it at the WNBA level. There's my future GOAT. That's a great pick because Paige Beckers is somebody who's so exciting to watch and you made some great points there. And like that speech was just incredible. It was incredible. When I watched it. Yeah, absolutely. It inspired was- me. Like, like I'm talking about a young kid here who, who could just, I mean, just getting up there and I, I don't think a lot of people were expecting it. And I think it was just, it's so necessary. It's so necessary to advocate uh, for black female athletes and to understand that, you know, white female athletes do get more sponsorships, more recognition. And it's just, it's got to change. I love the fact that we could all just appreciate the talent that's on display in the women's game for once. Like, come on, like, let's just talk about it all the time. Um, But thank you seriously for joining me here on The Pivot.